so I've gone through uh, the subtools and I've uh, used this same technique to create hairs for the other parts of the head. So I have them on the top of the head. I also have some on the antenna and then also on the mouth parts and the palps here and then around the mouth itself and on this part of the head. So these are the larger hairs that you see on the body. So if you do a Google image search on Drosophila head, you can see that we have a lot of these larger hairs uh, all over the place. But we also have smaller, finer hairs. So if we take a closer look at this, the uh, head itself is quite fuzzy, uh, as many insects uh, actually are. So we need a way to create these smaller uh, little hairs that cover the surface. And you can see that you know on the head itself we have very fine small hairs, on the antenna slightly larger ones as well as on the palps, and then of course the long hairs that we've already made. So uh, the good news of course is that creating these fine hairs is actually pretty easy in ZBrush. We can use fiber mesh, which is ZBrush's own uh, hair creation system. And uh, it's thankfully easy to use and also kind of fun. Um, so let's take a look at how we can do it for the actual antenna. And uh, so I'm going to turn on the solo key so we can just see the antenna here. And um, what we need to do is we need to mask the parts of the surface where we want to put these fine hairs. So I'm going to hold the control key and make sure that my, uh, masking, uh, my masking brush is set to mask pen. Not mask curve pen, but just mask pen. This means that if I hold the control key and draw on the surface, I could just simply paint a mask. So I'm just going to paint a mask where I want to put the hairs. So for the most part, it's going to be all over this part of the antenna, or the antennae. If I need to erase part of a mask, I'm just going to lower my draw size, hold control and alt, and just erase that mask. So remember the alt key is the opposite key. So many times you want to do the opposite of something that you're trying to do in ZBrush, the Alt key is almost always the one that you want to press. So drawing a mask, I'm holding the Control key, erasing a mask, Control and Alt. Just paint around the surface here because I don't need hairs there. And I don't have to be overly careful with this, just where I think the hairs generally need to go. Make the draw size larger so that it's a little bit faster. So if you've never used fiber mesh before, it's pretty easy for creating a general overall kind of fuzziness. When you get into creating hairstyles for human characters, then it becomes quite a challenge. Um, but thankfully for us, since we're doing an insect, all we really need is just an overall kind of layer of fuzz. So I have my mask painted, and I'm going to go down to, in the tool palette, so I'm in the tool palette, I'm going to scroll down to, uh, let's scroll down to fiber mesh and expand fiber mesh. And if I turn on preview, we can see these hairs appear. They may look slightly different on your own model, but that's okay. It just requires a little bit of adjustment. To adjust the hair, we can expand the modifier section of fiber mesh. And of course, there are uh, a, a few hundred sliders and options in here. Um, if you want to know what a particular slider does or a button, hold the control key and um, hold your mouse or pointer over the slider and you'll get a very brief, concise description of what that slider does. So for the max fibers, which is fairly self-explanatory, if I increase this, we get more hairs. If I decrease it, we get less hairs. So we're doing the antennae, so we kind of want a medium level of, sorry, that's the palps right there, sorry. This is what we want to look at. We want kind of a medium level of longer hairs. So if I zoom out here, and of course we can turn off the solo button, it's nice to see this in relation to the rest of the model. Um, so let's lower the max fibers a little bit. We can change the length. 
And then uh, the other slider that I tend to work with a lot when I'm first working on hair is gravity. If I set gravity in a negative direction, then the hairs are going to point up. If I set it in a positive direction, they'll point down. In a middle point or at zero, they'll be a little bit on the neutral side. Uh, so I think that looks pretty good. And we can play with the length a little bit. The length profile graph will allow us to kind of fine tune the length. Maybe get a little bit of variation in there. Something like that looks nice. And really it's just a matter of playing with these until you get something that you like. I'm not going to worry too much about the color. We can change the color later. Um, but I'm going to leave the profiles and segments to the default values. If I increase these, I'll get a warning from CBrush telling me that the resulting um, polygon count is going to be very high if the profile or the segments is above these values. That might be okay if the model is not too dense, but usually you can get away with putting these at the default values and then when we actually render using ZBrush's BPR renderer, it usually does a good job of making them look fairly thick from a distance. So we're not we're not worried about rendering them this close where it's pretty obvious that they're polygon strips. We really want to just render kind of a full view. So this this should be fine. We don't really need to worry about adding too many divisions. So assuming this is something that we uh, think is, is uh, good, we can go to the top of fiber mesh and choose accept. It's going to give us a warning that lets us know that fast preview is going to be enabled so that the performance of ZBrush is not hampered by all these hairs. So I'll choose yes. And you can see they appear a little thicker. So what choosing accept does is it converts the hair into a subtool. So before accepting the hair, everything was contained within the antenna subtool. After accepting it, it's automatically converted into geometry and then made into a separate subtool called Fiber. And this one's called Fiber 25. It's usually a good name. It's usually a good idea to rename this, so we'll call this antennae hair or fiber, I guess would be a better way to put it. And hit enter. And if you want to groom the hair, you can go into the brush palette and choose one of these groom brushes. So any of the brushes that start with groom here. So just hit the G key to kind of restrict the view so we can only see these uh, brushes that start with G. So let's say if I just use the regular uh, groom brush, which is this one right here, and I'll increase my draw size and start drawing on this. Now the mistake that I make every single time I do this is I forget that the fiber mesh has been converted into a um, separate subtool and I'll use the groom brush and start dragging on my geometry and I get this kind of thing or maybe I'm dragging on a part of the surface that's masked and nothing happens. So if that happens to you, just remember that you need to go to the subtool palette and select that newly created fiber subtool in order to get the results that you want. 